Hey guys, you're listening to the Time to Football podcast, and this is our analysis of the NFC North prior to the 2018 NFL season. Glad to be back and doing this podcast again. Uh, Took two or three weeks off because I was actually out of town for a wedding. And we actually were in Decatur, Alabama, which is the hometown of Philip Rivers. And it was actually pretty cool because it's not a super small town, but it's not big at all. Um, And to see him grow up in a town like that, to be in that town and actually drive by and see the high school that he played at Athens High School. It was actually pretty cool to notice that he grew up there and where he is now in a big town in L.A. So uh, that was pretty cool being out of town. It's a good break, uh, but I'm glad to be back and, and uh, joining you guys and giving you an analysis of, of everything football going into the start of the 2018 season. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this podcast. My name is Hassan Khan. I'm the founder and the host of the show. Um, and... We've been doing a series about each division in football. There's eight divisions, four in the NFC, four in the AFC. We did the NFC South. We kind of broke down uh, each team going into the 2018 season about are they going to be good, are they going to regress, are they going to be even better, going to be even worse. Um, And we kind of broke down each team individually in each division. And today, we've actually got the NFC North that we're going to be talking about. So that's the Vikings, the Bears, the Lions, and the Packers. So we're going to be talking about them in that order. And it was actually pretty cool is we actually started doing something um, on Time of Football's Instagram. We kind of promoted a a contest, uh, if you will, where if you're a fan of an NFC North team, you can actually submit a video, like a short 60-second video, explaining why your team will make the playoffs. And... We actually got a few uh, people messaging us on, on Instagram and submitting their videos. And we've uh, handpicked two people. Um, one is actually, we're going to show clips of their videos or, or parts of their video. Um, he's a big Vikings fan. We're going to show it in a little bit. Uh, but then the other guy, we're actually going to choose one guy for each podcast, each division Uh to be live with us and join us so we can kind of debate about that team here on that podcast. And we've got someone for you today. His name is Josh. Um, his Instagram name is Knox underscore SS. We're gonna actually going to, uh, if you're watching this podcast on YouTube, we'll put that, that username below in the video so you guys can go ahead and give him a follow. But um, he's a big Packers fan, and he submitted a video talking about why the Packers are not only going to make the playoffs, but are going to win the Super Bowl. So I was like, oh, wow, he's pretty confident in um, his team. So let's get him on the podcast. Let's um, talk about why he believes that, why are the Packers going to be a good team and a, and a Super Bowl contender. Um, so we got that for you um, here today. Um, but to kind of kick off this NFC North podcast, like I said, the first team that we're going to talk about The Minnesota Vikings. So we actually got a video submission from an Instagram user. His username is Juicy Mix, which is kind of interesting. I don't know. Um, But he submitted a video talking about why he thinks the Vikings are going to make the playoffs. Um, So let's go ahead and check out a couple of clips from that video. Um, I'm saying why I think the Minnesota Vikings will make the playoffs. Well, they got veteran Kirk Cousins out for agency, and uh, Stephon Diggs, and then we got Adam Thielen here. The TVS Murray played really good when Dalvin Cook got injured. And so let's talk about their defense. Um, um, Xavier Rhodes, two big defensive tackles, and yeah. And a big thank you to Juicy Mix for submitting that video. That's just a it's an odd name to say, but nonetheless, um, what he talked about is pretty much in, in, in a whole is talent on the Minnesota Vikings. He was mentioning Kirk Cousins, the wide receiver core, and Stephon Diggs, Adam Thielen. He mentioned the defense. He mentioned Xavier Rhodes. So pretty much that whole team is jam-packed with talent. And to kind of go off of that, that's kind of why the reason the Minnesota Vikings are going to make the playoffs is because of the talent that's on that team. 
honestly, it's it's a given that they're going to make the playoffs at this point. If they don't, it's going to be a big disappointment. If they don't even make the Super Bowl, I'll go as far as to say that. If they don't make the Super Bowl, that's even going to be a bigger disappointment because it's pretty much the same exact team, but with a better quarterback. So you make all these acquisitions um, throughout the years, draft picks, your team progresses, and you finally get that key quarterback that you need in Kirk Cousins, sign him to a three-year deal, give him three opportunities to make the Super Bowl, but pretty much at this point in 2018, this is your one opportunity. Otherwise, this whole season is going to be a disappointment. Nothing else or nothing less is expected from the Minnesota Vikings at this point. Um, A lot of other teams in the NFC did get better. Uh, The Eagles haven't gotten worse. They're actually going to get better with Carson Wentz being back. Um, Other teams in the NFC, like the Atlanta Falcons, are going to be more in sync with their offense. They're going to be better. Um, Green Bay Packers are getting... Um, Aaron Rodgers back so they're going to be a contender in the NFC North so teams in the NFC are getting better and can contend with the Minnesota Vikings so anything less than the Super Bowl is kind of a disappointment uh, for the Minnesota Vikings but we want to thank Juicy Mix so much for for submitting their video as far as make the Super Bowl like I said other NFC teams are better we'll see if they go ahead and get over that hump and can beat those teams and actually be a, a contender for the Super Bowl Uh, The next team we've got coming up is the Chicago Bears. So um, this is an interesting team. They weren't terrible last year, uh, but they weren't good. They've actually made some strides in free agency and with their draft um, to get to that point where they can actually make a push for maybe a wild card spot. It's kind of hard to say that they're going to make a push for the NFC North title because if you don't take down Minnesota – You've got Green Bay in the rearview mirror and also Detroit Lions um, just coming up on you and trying to get that spot. So it's going to be hard for the Bears to get that division title. um, But you could make a debate on why they could make a wild card um, for the 2018 season. Mitch Trubisky, he's he's a good guy. He's a good... uh, uh, For a guy that... Played only 13 games in college, um, only had an 8-5 and five record, but the Bears traded up, showing that they had confidence in this guy, training up to get him number two overall in 2017, and, and usually second-year quarterbacks do get better, um, but also, on top of that, he's had a lot of help uh, coming in, so Allen Robinson is a guy that they just signed, so if you don't remember who Allen Robinson is... It's because he's been a while since he's been kind of relevant because he's been dealing with injuries. Um, in 2017, he was out for the whole year. In 2016, he kind of had a down year because uh, Blake Bortles kind of regressed. But in 2015 was his career year when he went off. Um, Jacksonville decided to let him go. Um, and the Bears kind of acted up upon that and said, let's sign Allen Robinson to be our number one guy. That's going to be a huge asset for for Mitch Trubisky um, because I think Biscuit's going to finally have a number one receiver to throw to and this is probably the best receiving core slash tight end core that he has in in Chicago ever since probably I'll go as far to say when Alshon Jeffrey, Brandon Marshall, Martellus Bennett were there with Jay Cutler slash Josh McCown. Um, Allen Robinson can be that number one guy in Chicago. Um, Tariq Cohen and Jordan Howard are one of the more underrated running back duos in the NFL. Probably a top five running back duo um, in the National Football League because they're both incredibly young. They have so much upside and so much potential. Um, Tariq Cohen is someone that you can use him in the passing game. You could use him in the return game. We saw his, his burst and his agility last year is a good replacement for Jordan Howard when Jordan Howard needs to come out on third downs. So that's going to help out uh, that Chicago Bears offense a lot. But to piece everything together with the the incredibly young backfield that you have, with the added player in Allen Robinson on the wide receiver core, you've got Matt Nagy, the new head coach. So John Fox is out. He got fired. Matt Nagy came from uh, Kansas City, which is actually kind of funny because if you look up a picture of him, 
He kind of looks like an older, balder Alex Smith. But hey, I mean, that's just my opinion. Matt Nagy came in from Kansas City to lead the Chicago Bears as their new head coach. And Ryan Pace had a lot of a lot of uh, faith in him, the general manager, and said, we're going to have a conversation with this guy, bring him in for an interview. Loved him. You're signed in as a head coach. And now that's someone that can develop Mitch Trubisky. Mitch Trubisky can develop under his offense for so many years in Chicago. Um, so that offense is definitely going to get better. But I do like the Bears, and I do think if they were to get over that hump, if they were to maybe pull out an upset against Green Bay just once, pull out an upset against Minnesota or Detroit just once, then they're going to make a push for the, the wild card race. The Detroit Lions. So Matt Patricia is in as their new head coach. Is this a good hire? Is this a bad hire? There's a lot of debate on on both sides. But a lot of people are saying that Matt Patricia was hired mainly due to the name value. I've uh, got friends that I've personally spoken to that are New England Patriots fans, and they've been watching a lot of uh, Matt Patricia games and seeing him give up a lot of yards on defense. And they're not lying. He he has given up a lot of yards on defense before with his, with um, when he was a defensive coordinator in New England. And so people are saying he's not going to be that good of a head coach. However, we don't know yet. You know, he hasn't coached in a, a single NFL game, so we're going to have to give him a chance. But, yeah, I, I think I, I am kind of sort of siding with them as far as when they say he was kind of hired mainly due to name value. That does seem to be true, but he's been a, a, a head coaching candidate for at least the last two or three years. Um, and in that last two or three years, he hasn't really gotten better on defense. So it is sort of a name value higher. But hey, if Detroit loves him, um, they say that he's going to be uh, their head coach that can develop with Matthew Stafford, with this offense, with this defense. And um, we'll just have to see. We'll have to see what happens there. Um, Matthew Stafford is also a constant on offense. You know this team's always going to be good. You know you can rely on him. Um, he's good in, in, in fourth quarter comebacks. Got nothing to worry about. Golden Tate is good. Marvin Jones is good as well. So, you know, this team is 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 solid on offense when it comes to the pass game. I think overall, um, the run game is still going to be the same. Defensively, they're still going to be the same, even though they've got some good players over there defensively. I don't see this team regressing, but I also don't see this team progressing. I don't see them getting any better. So I think they're going to be pretty much the same team, kind of the third best in the NFC North, having a better chance at making the NFC wildcard race than the Chicago Bears. So that's a positive. But, you know, they, they, they can make Green Bay have a run for their money. Minnesota's going to be a little bit tough. They're pretty much going to be the same as they were in 2017. Um, Patreon. So Patreon is the number one way to pay your favorite content creator. So YouTuber, videographer, whatever it is, um, you can actually go to patreon.com. Think of it like a GoFundMe for uh, content creators. For Town of Football, we actually just launched this recently. And... It's kind of like a GoFundMe, but you kind of pay them monthly, sponsor them monthly. Um, but it can be as little as $1 a month. And for us at Town of Football, you actually have perks. So if you donate $1 a month, you get a free Town of Football wristband. If you do $5 a month, you get a free Town of Football t-shirt. Um, you could even do as low as 50 cents, heck, whatever it is. But every little penny counts. Um, it's kind of like a lifeline for content creators. So if you go to patreon.com slash time to football, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash time, the number two, football. You can check out all of our perks, uh, see what your money goes to, um, and hopefully get some some new swag with a, with a wristband and a t-shirt. So patreon.com slash time to football. That's patreon.com slash time to football. And the last thing that we're going to talk about here on this NFC North podcast are the Green Bay Packers. And we actually held a little bit of a quote-unquote contest to get a, one of our fans to join us on this podcast to talk about one of these NFC North teams. And joining us right now is Josh Holdaway. Josh, how you doing, man? I'm doing excellent. I 
really happy to be on the show, Hassan. And uh, I wanted to say congrats to you also on your trademark for uh, Time to Football. That's a big deal. Appreciate it. You've been watching our podcast. I love it. Um, yeah, we wanted to get you on here because you're a big Packers fan. Uh, you submitted a, a video talking about why you think the Green Bay Packers are not only going to go to the playoffs, but even win the Super Bowl. So let's just get started and talk about your background with the Green Bay Packers. How'd you become a Packer fan? Well, there's a lot of uh, preface to that story as the most tribal you know, individuals as we are in the NFL, how it goes. But uh, I have to give a big thanks to my dad and my mom splitting up. Divorce is not always an easy thing, but it's a very beneficial thing in my case. But to explain, <laughs> uh, I was actually uh, following the Packers for the first year when Brett Favre made his run uh, for Super Bowl 31, and then they won. But I had to actually leave halftime because it was on that Sunday, and we had to go pick up my sister <laughs> at my dad's house. Wow. So I missed the ending of that game. And then the very next mm-hmm. year, of course, my dad's a Broncos fan. And I had to witness Elway beat our butt. And, you know, of course we held up hope, but it just became that rivalry thing in the household. And then, yeah, it's materialized. So, uh, you know, I think you pick your tribe based on the way that you are. Anybody that's willing to walk out in public with a cheese on their head, I think, is my kind of person. So just kind of grew and I grew up and surrounded myself with Packer fans. Hey, nonetheless, you've seen some great moments being a Packers fan, I'm pretty sure. Um, Packers fans have it pretty good these days. And even though it was rough last year, we'll get into all that. But being a Packers fan, we're a little spoiled, you know, to be honest. But I'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. So over the years, the Packers have been doing pretty good, except with the exception of last year. But that was due to uh, certain someone's injury um, behind center. But... Let's talk about your video and your points on to why you think the Green Bay Packers are going to be so successful this upcoming year. And one of those main points is you believe the run game is going to be pretty stable. Go more into depth on that. Well, you know, everybody has, every team has an amazing back. That's sure, fire. But the difference, I think, between the Packers and most, you know, it branches out into a lot of different things. But reality is last year when we drafted three running backs late rounds, they had the opportunity to develop together. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, stock in that, being that there's a lot more camaraderie. You see that even when you watch the top 100 players online and so forth, you're seeing um, it's not just Williams up there. You're also seeing him up there with Aaron Jones. And there's a great camaraderie. And then with Montgomery and his background, even if one person goes down, they all know their role. And they're, it's not a big fight, you know, in the OTAs and team drills and within the Packers organization. I just believe that there's a trickle-down effect. Um, so even though, yeah, we're past, we're past happy, as of offense is amazing, I don't have any doubts with the running back core, you know. And then you've got Mays there at a fourth string kind of sitting. We'll see how things work out in training camp as – You know, we're all excited to see, but um, I'm real excited just because Montgomery's already taken, you know, surefire hits and carried the team through the end of 2016. And then you really did see some dynamics in how Williams and uh, Jones played off of each other throughout the season last year with Montgomery playing very intermittently. So, yeah, I, I really don't doubt it. You know, I don't go off of the record. I go off of the play by play and. You know, I, I saw a lot of uh, back and forth, and I just like seeing them in the offseason also hanging out together and doing things together, and it's not a one-person, you know, team. The way to win is, you know, not just to ha- be one dimension. you got to be all kinds of dimensional, especially in the NFL. Yeah, absolutely. So um, is, do you think that there's going to be a starter in that running back um, committee or are they going to take that committee approach with the Green Bay Packers? Because we saw Ty Montgomery, who was, um, I mean, he's a good player, but last year a lot of people kind of tended to overhype him, per se, especially in fantasy football. Um, and we saw kind of the torch passing towards those uh, rookies and those younger players like Aaron Jones and, uh, and Williams. So do you think that Montgomery is still going to be the starter in Green Bay? I think Montgomery will start the season as the, as the core back, yeah. But... 
I wouldn't be surprised to see any halftime switch-ups in any point during the season. I don't see McCarthy as a, like I say, a one-dimensional type of coach. He's, you know, all the best teams, any playoff-bound teams, are the ones that are reaching into their basket, they're spreading it out, they're allowing their, you know, team to stay fresh. So it, in that, you know, effect... Uh, yeah, I see Montgomery taking the very first run for the season. But yeah. the second that that first snap is going, I wouldn't be surprised to see a punch here and a punch there from Williams and Aaron Jones coming in as a fourth quarter finisher. I believe in, in the way the Packers are going to work, and most teams actually this season, that you got to treat the running back game like you treat a pitcher. You know, Don't, don't play them all the time. You flip it in. New England Patriots have been doing it year after year after year where they bring in a, a game plan per week, and it's different every single week. And I think that there's a lot to learn in the NFL by just being a copycat league that it is. Um, so, yeah, to answer the question in short, Montgomery will definitely be the primary back, in my opinion, starting a training camp has a way of think, seeing things, and there's always a little bit of a sophomore hiccup sometimes. So they're going to play it as, as the cards are dealt. Um, are you wearing a Green Bay Packers gear? Who, whose jersey are you wearing? Uh, in support, uh, just I'll, I'll plug this a little early, but I definitely put on my gold jersey. Um, this is a Jordy Nelson 87 gold all day. Um, the only thing I wish is that it was Adidas. But altogether, this was a gift after my uh, fantasy league last year. Got from my roommate. And, um, you know, as much as... It sucks to have to have lost Jordy in the off season. I don't think he could have gone to a better place in the Raiders. And uh, you know, the the awesome opportunity is I think you were getting into with uh, with Devonte Adams. It's it's an opportunity now for him to jump in. But the plug is that if you are a Packers fan, I like to go a little bit more in depth than the typical um, producer or creator under the Packers brand and. Uh, if you watch Aaron Rodgers in off seasons, he does this thing. It's called It's Aaron, and uh, there's a Golden September organization that he supported through a girl named Annie who lost her twin brother to pediatric cancer. And so I just wanted to mm-hmm. quick plug a little bit on uh, if all the Packers fans can really get on board and we can get a little bit more support. We've all got our green and gold, but if you can wear gold in September and support a pediatric cancer, I'd like to further that. Awesome. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely put that in underneath uh, so that you guys can go ahead and click on that link and, and show your support for that. Um, but you're kind of nailing the head um, or nailing it into the coffin with Devontae Adams. We're talking about Jordy Nelson and how he's a big loss. Devontae Adams has been the guy for the past couple of years that's been stepping up. Um, you think that receiving core is going to be all right? I think for the nuts and bolts of what I could say about Devontae Adams, this is his opportunity. Now, last year, he, he's a top, what, number 45 on top 100 voted mm-hmm. by his peers. So Devontae Adams has the opportunity right now to take the reins as the number one guy. This is, we've, I don't think we've ever had a younger wide receiver core, but that's a beautiful thing for a guy like Aaron Rodgers. He's a guy that gets out of the pocket, and he has that same type of relationship, I believe, that him and Jordy had had for the full decade that Jordy was there. But now Devontae Adams, four years established, also with Rodgers. He was able to catch anything, everything, even without you know, him in. And that finish to, I believe it was the Browns overtime victory. Um, mm-hmm. Just spinning out. He, he bounces off of everything. He's had the opportunity to learn um, his frame, what he needs to be working on with his body, his health, everything else. I just think it's his opportunity to shine. And I'm looking forward to that Um you know, translating into the game. So it's unfortunately we're kind of missing him a little bit right now with the apparent hamstring, you know, pull out during OTAs and mandatory mini camps. But, you know, the beauty is with Devontae Adams, he's, he's a baller. He, he doesn't drop anything that's really thrown his way. If he does, there's 50 ball, 50% ball. He's going to catch it 75% of the time. Uh, any other aspects of this team do you think are going to help them catapult to a Super Bowl victory, potential Super Bowl win, uh, maybe defensively, maybe coaching staff, 
any other aspects on on why they can go ahead and get over that hump and get into the playoffs and get to the Super Bowl? We've got all the changes that make a Super Bowl for the Packers. Um, the last time we won was Aaron Rodgers, what, second or third year in the league, and it came right as Dom Capers entered. It was the opportunity of transition where literally we went from a 3-4 to a 4-3, completely flipped the script on on what was to be anticipated. I think that the league plays a lot in the fact that what you had the prior season, unless you're willing to really come in the following season with a, some surprises and some new elements, you know, people know too much what to expect. So Mike Pettin coming over from Cleveland, who's always, you know, created some amazing, even though Cleveland loses, let's be honest about this, a lot. <laughs> the fact is, is that they do have close games. They just don't end up having that same endurance factor over the end. I mean, even we last year lost to him in an, or won over them in an overtime game. You watch those divisional games in the AFC North. That's the tightest division of all. And uh, Mike Pettin joining the crew, Mike Daniels getting Muhammad Wilkerson opposite him with Kenny Clark coming up and don't not not to, you know, you can't take away from uh, that full defensive uh, line. Uh, Montrevious Adams didn't even get a chance to really shine. And you saw what he did in Auburn. He's complete bull coming right up, just like Mike Daniels. So I'm real excited just to see how it all kind of plays out. But. Um, uh, basically the defense being new and Rogers healthy, that equals destruction for, for the NFC North. So as long as that's consistent enough throughout a 16 game season, there's, uh, there's a lot to be excited about in, in Green Bay. Title town USA. Um, yeah, no, that's an interesting perspective on it. Um, what do you think the record's going to be? Are they going to get over 10 wins? Are they going to get 13 wins? No doubt. The 10, sub-10 10 is an unacceptable year. Today. So I, I, I've never really looked at a season as an optimistic Packer fan as sub-10. You know, Aaron Rodgers only had one sub-10 other than this last year, and that was his first year in the league. Um, we're too dynamic, and, you know, with Aaron healthy, you saw how it started last season, and he's got a – I think according to Mike Daniels um, on an interview here recently, he said that Aaron Rodgers sitting out for, you know, no, has it been nine, ten months, the film, the amount of study and attention to the game for that type of mind and the capacity of what he's going to be capable of this year, there's no doubt in my mind that we can be a 12-4 and four team or up. Um, my dream for the Packers, and now I haven't really had a chance to really dive into the schedule predictions yet other than to know that, we're starting with Chicago, um, and the division always ends in week 16 and 17, so we get that chance to earn it usually. But the beauty of this whole season is that, from what I do know, we've got a pretty nice schedule. Um, lots yeah. of time, lots of balance, um, and our bye week coming a little bit earlier. I think, what is it, week seven this year? Yeah. But either way, um, I think that if I were to predict anything off the top of my head, I'd say 12 and 4. That's usually my, right about my range. But I will be doing a schedule predictions video on my channel, you know, by by July, shortly after the ESPYs usually. Yeah, so you're talking about your channel. Uh, we wanted to give you a little bit of a, a segment to plug yourself. So uh, tell us what you do and where can we find your content? Well, uh, my alias and uh, Packer channel is under the uh, alias Knox. So it's kind of a, um, it's a play on words. It's a lot of parody and comic. I play off of the Good Morning Football morning show. Um, and I like to intermix, of course, all the elements of football and hype and whatever, but also I like to take new elements and be player friendly. So what you'll find on my channel, on my channel is uh, a lot of parody, comedy, commercialism. I try to take the whole nuts and bolts of a team and then collapse it into a 12 to 15 minute segment video. And I'll be tying it all in together for a, a full series. But the best way to find it is under the word Knox. That's spelled N-A-H-X. And... Uh, 
the whole purpose of my channel is kind of to promote love. So the NOX actually stands for Never Again Hate X. Throwing up the X for anything. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, you guys check out his stuff. Um, so we'll put a link in the description to your, your YouTube channel, also your Instagram, uh, which is NOX, N-A-H-X underscore S-S. Uh, so you guys make sure to, to follow Josh over there. Um, last thing we always ask every single guest on this show what is your favorite NFL moment or football moment? So it could be professional football, college football, if you played high school football, whatever it may be. What's your favorite football moment? The easy answer, of course, is just watching the Super Bowl uh, where we're going against the Steelers in the Super Bowl 45. But mostly just because I was actually in Arizona working. I was on a, on a slew of just amazing work down there but i had the opportunity to spend some time with uh, family friends and her husband happened to be a mighty mighty steelers fan and i've got a brother that's a mm. steelers fan too so uh but that's the obvious favorite the personal favorite was actually watching um and it's sad to say but there's a guy i played with in high school at clovis high school uh his name is tyler klutz and he ended up playing um for dallas and he was wow. a fullback, and he actually got his only uh, touchdown against us <laughs> in a playoff game with Romo. So <laughs> just watching, you know, old pals and friends. I wasn't a big football star at all. I, I kind of blew out my knee early in high school, but uh, I'm more of a creative artist anyway. But seeing kind of the guys I used to know go up there, and then we still won the game, but seeing him catch the – a touchdown there was pretty impeccable that's awesome awesome how it came around and scored a touchdown against your favorite team um josh i appreciate you joining us uh thank you so much for giving you yours giving us your insight on what the green bay packers are going to do next year and hopefully we'll, we can get you back on here love talking yeah, to you again i uh, really appreciate you giving me the opportunity and uh to all Green Bay Pakistan, don't forget, keep wearing uh, gold in September. Look forward to that opportunity. And thanks for having me. Peace. And that was Josh Hordaway joining us on the Time to Football podcast. So like we said on the start of the show, Josh is just a football fan. He loves the Green Bay Packers. He commented on one of the podcasts on YouTube. And he said, how do I get on this podcast? I would really love to be on this podcast. Commented back and I told him, if you're a fan of an NFC North team, just message us talking about why your favorite team is going to make the playoffs on Instagram at Time to Football. And guess what? He messaged us, sent us a 60 second video talking about why they're going to make the Super Bowl. And he was on the podcast. So that can be you. We would love to have more fans and more of you guys on here uh, because we would love to kind of turn it around. We would love for you to have that opportunity to, to be a podcaster, to be a sportscaster. So, The next podcast that we've got coming up, we're talking about the NFC West. So that's the San Francisco 49ers, the Seattle Seahawks, the LA Rams, the Arizona Cardinals. If you're a fan of any one of those four teams, message us. Message us on Instagram at Time to Football. Send us a 60-second video talking about why one of those four teams is going to make the playoffs And if you have good enough arguments, debates, good enough points, reasons, we're going to choose you. We're going to choose one person to be on that podcast and debate with us on air, just like Josh, debate with us live and have an opportunity to be on this podcast. We'll love to hear from you guys. So if you guys are listening to this on iTunes, make sure you guys go over to YouTube and subscribe. If you're on YouTube, make sure to jump over to iTunes. But regardless, when you go to iTunes... Make sure you rate and review this podcast because it's, it, because it kind of helps us out with um, telling us that you guys love this kind of content that we're coming out with. Uh, if you give us five stars because you want to help a brother out or if you write an awesome review saying that this show is amazing because you want to help a brother out, it kind of helps me out knowing that you guys love this content and we come out with more of it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, follow us on Instagram at Time to Football. Pretty much any social media site, just search Time to Football. You'll find us. Subscribe to us, follow us, whatever it is. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you next time. I'm